right, everybody, welcome back to uh, Can Hammer, your source for 40k from the Great White North. A few days late, but I have finally received my Warhammer, uh, my White Dwarf for uh, September 2017. And of course, this is the 30th anniversary edition of White Dwarf for Warhammer 40k. Uh, it's the 30th uh, anniversary of Warhammer 40k, and so this is a special edition of White Dwarf. So that makes Warhammer uh, 40k come out in 1987. I started playing in 1990, 90, 91. So I must have been in one, the first or second edition. And when I bought a starter box, that was the box that I got. The one with the crimson fists on the front. And um, in this kind of pile, this classic sort of Space Marine pile and so this issue is pretty nostalgic uh, so let's get into it first of all this is not like a normal it comes in a it comes in this kind of cardboard sort of container because inside there's posters and the magazine on the back of course is the new Primark Mortarian who is a Primark of Nurgle and there's some posters in here so this is a special edition of White Dwarf it came in a big bag that I had trouble opening so let's open it up Inside this edition, you get uh, a very thick edition of White Dwarf that is very cool, uh, almost just entirely artwork um, and not, a lot, not all the writing on the side, gives it a very nice clean look. Otherwise, excellent quality, beautiful magazine, which we're going to read in a second, and a big picture embossed kind of 3D standout picture of Mortarian. Very cool. I like how they do that. So that's very detailed and shiny, and then the rest of the page is not. So it makes it really stand out. It's like 3D, but it's not. Like there's no... There's no, you know, ridgedness to it or anything, but it's very cool. And then you get some posters. So one poster is a poster advertising Total Warhammer. There it is. No, thank you. And the other poster is a poster of that artwork. Oh, I won't be able to show you on camera because it's too big. But it's basically a poster of that Crimson Fist box cover, but new style uh, with the Primaris Marines. So very awesome um, against the Orcs. I don't think I'm ever going to do anything with that, but I'll keep it just in case. Off to the side somewhere. All right, let's get into it. Here we are. So very inside of the front cover advert for Shadespire, which is coming soon. You know, my problem with this advert is they didn't even paint their own miniatures. <laughs> anyway. 30 years of Warhammer. Lots of contents here. It's gonna be a good addition, I think. So here we are. 30 years of Warhammer, and here are the uh, box covers of all the editions. Very cool. Yeah, and so I remember that's the edition I started with, that old Crimson Fist, and then next was the Blood Angels one, so I definitely started playing in first edition. Yeah, so I played before 1993, so yeah, that's it. And then I missed all of these, and then came back at uh, 7th edition and Dark Imperium. Very cool. Um, I didn't purchase one of the special edition Primaris Sergeants because it's just another Primaris Marine, not interested in that. I actually still have one of those old Imperial Space Marine models that I haven't opened yet, just in case. And here is a closer look at Mortarian and all his glory. I'm not a fan of the model personally. I like Magnus way better but I can see that he's gonna be sweet with some sweet rules. And Death Guard are looking to be very strong. 
we will see what happens. Oh, look, they've leaked a couple of data cards. Miasma of Pestilence. This is a Warp Charge 6. Uh, within 18 inches, Death Card unit. Uh, subtract one from all hit rolls against that unit. That's pretty sweet. And Nurgle's Rot. This stratagem can be used once per battle in the shooting phase. Select a friendly Death Card character, roll a d6. On a 4 plus, that unit being rolled for suffers d3 mortal wounds. Wow, 7 inch or a 50% chance of doing D3 mortal wounds. That's pretty good. So Death Guard will be pre-ordering this weekend. And we're going to be giving away Death Guard Codex and Mortarian. So do stay tuned. We're going to announce the giveaway probably on Saturday. And then Codex Adeptus Mechanicus will be next. We'll be able to buy Call as a separate uh, model, which is great. Um, here's some more stuff for Adeptus Mechanicus. Let's have a look here. Stratagem. Use this stratagem at any time to immediately change which canticle is being canted. You can either choose a canticle you have not already chosen or randomly select one in the usual way. Tactical objective. Score one victory point if you randomly determine which canticle of the was being canted. <laughs> okay. Cool. Here we are. More AOS. Of course, Blight War is coming out. Blight War is coming out uh, this week, and that's exciting for Nurgle. I wonder if Nurgle will get a battle tome, and I get to use all of Andrew's Nurgle stuff that I have. And of course, being released, they've already leaked this female Stormcast and the Slimux guy in the snail. It's going to be cool. General's Handbook, of course, we talked about on last week's podcast. And all these rules, War Scroll cards coming out, which is very cool. Unfortunately, they don't have any for Death or Flesh Eaters. Hopefully, that will be coming out soon. Um, and they really need to make these for 40k. That would be so good. This is the uh, advert about the skulls and the vines sets that you can buy for terrain and modeling. And uh, more Forge World stuff, Thousand Suns. I gotta tell you, these Telemon Dreadnoughts for Custodes, just awesome. I want. And this cool dude for Thousand Suns, also awesome. All right, exclusive Plague Marines for the web store and some more books and some more video game news. And Inquisitor Martyr comes out uh, this week, I believe. You can get early access on Steam if you're into that kind of game. Letters. All right, 30 Years of Warhammer. There's the original first edition box art I remember picking up. And this is what the game is now. Primaris versus Nurgle. So there's going to be apparently nine new units in the new Death Guard Codex. We might get a chance to see what some of them are here. There's going to be new Terminators, probably Typhus. Of course, there's Mortarian. There might be some Hellbrutes. I see Plague Drones. Um, and I see this thing, which looks like some kind of a siege engine with a big sort of ram and a big bombard at the top. Um, very cool. Yep, I guess we'll have to wait and see, but that looks awesome. So I'll read this in my own time, but it looks like it's going to be a fun read. And all week they've been doing kind of... And here they summarize the release of sets and things like that. Some more artwork. Here's a big set piece with uh, Bio Titans and Eldar Titans. 
uh, cool. Definitely worth perusing this issue at a slower pace. That was quite a long feature, we'll have to read it. So here's a battle report featuring the members of the original um, box art, uh, Orcs versus uh, Crimson Fists. That's very cool. I guess they had this Crimson Fist army hiding out somewhere, so they're gonna be playing this. Uh, so game one, this is Indomitus Crusade on the world of Pyros. So Chaos versus Imperial Fist and Ultramarines, okay? So I guess it's not Orcs versus Imperial Fist. Primaris versus Chaos. Imperial Fist look awesome if you can pull it off, man. I guess we'll see. I'm gonna paint Nick's Orcs yellow, so we'll see if I can pull it off. Here come the Crimson Fists. Ultramarines. Raven Guard coming in there. A Lord of Skulls. Crazy bat rep. Okay, and then game two is, in fact, Orcs versus um, the Crimson Fist in a last stand, like on the cover. So Crimson Fist in the middle and the Orcs surrounding them. That's pretty sweet. Wow, look at these armies. Pedro Cantor's last stand. The Ultimate Guide to the Rhino. <laughs> Interesting article. The most ubiquitous of vehicles. You don't see them that much anymore, not without stuff on top of them. All right, so Tale of Four Lord Warlords goes back now uh, to these Black Templar dudes. They've, he's added some Custodes and Gullum to his army, of course. The Elder guy has added the Triumvirate of the Inari. Astra Militarum has added Celestine and her bodyguards. So take a look at this. So this um, color scheme for the bodyguards, white armor, gold backpacks, red cloaks, and some black and gold details. I'm actually really liking that color scheme and uh, black hair with white highlights and I'm thinking that that is the color scheme that I'm going to use for my Sisters of Battle. Uh, white with black bodices and gold details instead of silver details and uh, yeah, red um, cloakwork. So I think that's what I'm going to do right there. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a picture of it so I have it for reference. Boom. Okay. Chaos Breach Marines adding this big knight. It's always a good option. So here's a little focus on the new allies and allegiance abilities in AOS. That's it, like two pages. There's some new rules for Lord of the Rings. So you know what I'm thinking, Lord of the Rings, they have these um, Morgul Knights. Um, which would be awesome as uh, Blood Knights for a Soul Blight army. Been very tempted to do that. I think the scale of these is a little bit smaller. It's not as heroic, but I think it would still work. And here we go. Focus on Mortarian. Here we are in all his detail. His armor, all these kind of things that fly off of his armor that's 
seems to be a uh, detail that's common to all the new Nurgle stuff. Of course, he's got all the smoke and flies coming off the back there. See the smoke and flies? Look at these tiny little fly details. It's crazy the detail there. Look at all the little flies on there. And his scythe, very detailed scythe, and his plasma weapon. Crazy. Those flies, just crazy. Uh, General's Almanac. So talking about Skaven, Warp Fire Thrower teams, Nagash. I guess this is just an AOS article about various things. And kit bashing. So it's interesting is that they, on one hand, they're getting rid of uh, uh, rules for models that they can't buy anymore. So for example, in the new Space Marine Codex, there's no more dudes on bikes and things like that that don't come as a stock model. You have to kit bash them. And then the last month there was an article on how to kit bash a Grandmaster and a Dread Knight. And now is a whole article on kit bashing. So it's a little bit uh, be weird. They're kind of doing both sides. One side they're like, don't kit bash. No more rules for models that we don't have. And then they're like teaching how to kit bash. So it's very uh, weird how they're doing that conversion advice, things like that, so. Very weird. Anyway, this will be fun to read because I'm not very good kit bashing. I do try it a lot um, to make these people that don't come with models and it's always cool to try it out. Here's how you paint the Anniversary Primaris in Crimson Fist colors. And here's how you use these vines and things that they're selling now and the all the skulls. Wow, these are really cool bases. These vines are pretty cool. It might be useful to get some vines for my catechin. Maybe run them over some of the tanks. Here's some parade ground, some witches, some tree people, some ogres. Readers models. Look at this mastodon. Pretty cool. And, then, and the rogue idol, that is awesome. I love the eye details on the rogue idol in this picture. Now I have a rogue idol, I haven't assembled it yet, but I will eventually at some point. <laughs> Actually have an AOS game tomorrow night, so AOS will be making a return to the channel. And uh, that's it. So there's gonna be a 40K league apparently. And yeah, it looks like it's gonna be some cool stuff coming out of White Dwarf Magazine, coming up. And Magnus. Okay, well that's a very quick run through of the 30th anniversary Warhammer edition of White Dwarf. I hope you enjoyed that and uh, do stay tuned. Um, in uh, probably tomorrow or the day after, we're gonna be announcing our giveaway for our 5,000 YouTube subscriber giveaway. Uh, where we're giving away Mortarian and a copy of the Death Guard Codex. So do uh, watch out for that announcement video and it will tell you what to do.